wait. There we go. Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So um, I understand that for tonight, we're going to have a few people that are not going to going to be able to um, be taking part in the class or not as actively as desired. But at the same time, um, I hope you guys are doing great. And also that none of you is facing any issues with, um, you know, the, the storm. Um, in my case, the situation is that as I am from San Miguel, um, the storm has already passed through here. It was way earlier today. It was around, uh, what, around 5, uh, 4.50 to 5 p.m. Um, so for us right now, it's like, you know, calm and uh, just a little bit refreshing. But yeah, it's understandable. Thank you um, before anything, because you guys have made it, because you're here, because you're listening, the ones who are going to be, um, you know, taking that role tonight as listeners. So thank you very much for the effort. And thank you for what you're doing, because sometimes it's some, um, you know, I like to take the time to, well, appreciate what you do, because I know that it's hard and I know that it's not um, like the most appropriate thing. You know, sometimes when we get home after work, all we want is just to go straight to bed and not spending so much time just, you know, coming to class or um, listening to someone speak about a language that we don't even understand completely. But you guys have done it. You have, you know, taken the decision of learning this language. And uh, I highly appreciate the effort that you're doing. Um, so, yeah, very, very good, um, you know, effort that you're doing. And, uh, yeah, it's something that I highly appreciate, as I said before. Um, because, you know, the effort and the hard work that you guys are putting into it is just admirable. So that's part of it. Now, for tonight, as promised yesterday, we were supposed to work on the three word phrasal verbs. Tonight, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be wrapping up the topic of having or getting something done because I need to get some examples from you. I haven't really gotten examples yet. So we're going to be working on examples. And then I think we're going to be dedicating the rest of the night mostly for those three word phrasal verbs apart from any other topic. So that's going to be the basic thing or the most important thing for tonight. Um, apart from that, I, of course, have, you know, the question that I always have at the beginning. For tonight, it's going to be something simple. Um, I copied this question from one of you who asked this to one of your peers in the last, what, last Thursday's class when you guys had the chance, you know, to go ahead and ask questions to your peers. So the question tonight is going to be, what's your favorite hobby? Like, you know, whenever you have some free time, some spare time, what activities do you like to perform? What's then your favorite hobby? I think we're going to start by hearing from Iris. So in your case, Iris, whenever you have some spare time, what's an activity that you like to perform? And repeat the question. Teacher, please. What would be your favorite hobby? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. My favorite hobby is um skiing and the different volcan. Um, I like the 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 gym. Mm -hmm. Um, and there is the moment I I know I can the the. They my hobby because I I started very hard. I um how do you say commence commence? I started. Okay, I started the university. Oh, it, okay. for me is very hard. Well, it's understandable. You know, sometimes we have activities that are more important than just you know I don't know just doing something for fun, but it will pay off. I can assure you because, I mean, you're doing a great effort also studying at the university and that is going to pay off at some point. So, well, it's it's okay. Nice, nice, nice. Very good. Um, How about Ana Mendoza? In your case, what would be your favorite hobby? Oh, wait, I'm talking about uh, Filomena, not Janira. 
because Janita asked me not to call her Ana. Okay, so Mendoza. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite is my favorite hobby is sleep. <laughs> okay. But I have another. <laughs> okay. Like uh, for example, in Sunday, mm -hmm. I go to ride bicycle. In the week. I go to the gym and okay. another thing okay, that made me feel better, <laughs> like uh, watch movies, listen uh -huh. to music. It's the better feeling. Depending on the feeling and depending on how much time you have, right? Yes. Yeah. That's because right. sometimes, you know, I think that music for many people, it's just my opinion. Okay. I don't want you guys to get offended by it. Uh, but I think that for many people... Music is not necessarily a hobby anymore because, I mean, we normally listen to music like on our way to work, on our way back home, and we listen to music baby basically at any time. And very few people take the time to listen to the music, like to pay attention to what they're listening to. Uh, and I feel like music is more and more becoming that thing that joins us. Like it's like a component, like an agree like an aggregation to the activities. But, um, uh, yeah, it's also important that sometimes, you know, we take the time, we just lay down and play some music and listen to it with like, you know, um, attentive ear, like, like really paying attention to it because yeah. I think like, you know, the art deserves that from us, you know, from yeah. that we pay attention to it. So very good. Yeah. If you have the time. It is very to good to listen to the, uh, the creation that they are that the artists have mm -hmm. yes how creative some some people are um so yeah and also something that in my case i will advise is that if if it's possible and if you like it listen to the music with headphones on not earphones porque los earphones son más dañinos los headphones son like overhead um because i have discovered it's not a discovery that i have done okay it's not that like oh i was the first person to notice no but I have experienced, better yet, I have experienced music like that. And I feel like it has so many layers. Like when you listen to music with headphones, you can truly listen to the details that the artists have put into it. Because when you simply listen to it through it, or sorry, when you listen to it through a speaker, um, the noise or the background sound or even the quality of the speaker can decrease the quality of the sound and can also decrease the availability of um details that you guys can get from the music so if you if you like it and if you have them try listening to music with headphones on and it's a totally different experience than listening to music you know only through a speaker yes it is okay mm -hmm. so very good. Thank you very much. All right, moving on. Let's see if we can hear from um, Miguel. How about you, Miguel? What is your favorite hobby? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. My favorite hobby is visiting the beach uh, in the department of La Union. It's cheerful, accompanied by a cold beer. I also like to go for a walk in the afternoons to the family park in the pier here in the Department of La Union. Okay. I work uh, as a maintenance. Maintenance, yes, in, maintenance in Calvo, the company right? Calvo Conservo. Yes. I learned, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, when you told me, I remember that. Uh, the beach that you like to go is it El Tamarindo or El Hawaii? Uh, some uh, you don't remember five 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 beach, oh. uh, Las Tunas, uh -huh. uh, Torola. I don't uh, know that one. Uh, Hawaii, H Hawaii, Hawaii. Uh, 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 Al fondo. Uh, El Tamarindo uh -huh. y eh, Playa Playitas eh, uh -huh. cerca de, de Calvo Conservo. 
Okay. I haven't been to um Torola, I think you said, right? Eh, ¿Cuál fue la segunda? Eh, la primera en las tunas, en el recorrido uh -huh. que se hace por la carretera. Uh -huh. Cuando uno entra aquí por carretera litoral, uh -huh. primero encuentra las tunas, uh -huh. luego Playa Torola, luego Playa Hawaii, por, al fondo del tamarindo. Uh -huh. y, yeah. a, y a este lado aquí por, por la planta, por el Golfo de Fonseca, Playita. la playa que... Playitas. Ah, oh, ok. He estado casi en y todas, menos... Y... Ajá. Sí. Menos en la ese... Torola, creo que dijo. Es que no entendí bien el nombre, pero ajá, en esa nunca Así estaba. se llama Playa, Playa Torola. Ah, oh, ok. Sí. Good. Yeah. Um, I have been to El Hawaii. The thing I like about El Hawaii, I normally recommend it, you know, when people have, like, uh, the chance to, to come and visit beaches here on this side of the country. Uh, I recommend El Hawaii because it's so calm. Like, it's like a lake. You know, there, there's no waves. There are no, there's no strong waves, at least. So if you come, for example, with um, babies or, you know, very young children, um, you can enjoy it because they're not going to drown so easily. You're going to be so, so, so distracted just for that to happen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, some of the beaches in La Union are very, very nice because they're just calm and you can enjoy um, great seafood. I don't know if you guys knew, but... A lot of the seafood that is actually sold on the um on the center side of El Salvador is actually produced here in in the western side. So I mean in the eastern side. So you know things that happen sometimes. But yeah, very good. So going to the beach is a very good hobby. So thank you very much for sharing, Miguel. All right. Now, uh, moving on. Let's see if we can hear from. Um, Janina Mendoza, how about you? What is your favorite hobby? Uh, good evening, teacher. Good evening. <clears throat> um, my favorite hobby is go to go to shopping. Oh, okay. <laughs> or shopping uh, online. Oh. Um, and the the second one is red. Mm -hmm. Red. Mm -hmm. um, I I bought two books in English. Oh, nice! Uh, uh, um, uh, there are um, uh, he, stories stories about a a, a girl. Mm -hmm. It's um, there. Um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, they are some I suppose funny it's like a diary okay uh, about about the life of the teenager and I I I didn't begin to to read uh, right now but I I have in mind that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, reading is always going to be important because you get vocabulary, you know, and also you uh -huh. get entertained. If you start uh -huh. understanding what you're reading, you are going to be entertained. Um, uh -huh. In my case, for example, I started reading English when I was in my second year at the university. Um, I got as a gift the series of uh, books, The Hunger Games. So I read them. But the first time I read them, I didn't really understood what was actually said. Like in some parts, you know, the, there were some words that I didn't get. But I will continue. I only continue reading. And then if I found a word mm -hmm. that I, I liked or that I wanted to understand, I will go ahead and grab my dictionary and start, you know, searching for that word. Um, because that way you're going to start creating new vocabulary and creating new connections mm -hmm. in your mind um, to find the meaning for those words. So if you have the time, you know, um, one of these days, start the reading because I highly advise you guys to go ahead and read. I know that for many people, reading is boring because um, you don't really mm -hmm. like to take the time. No, no, no. But, I love to read. Yeah, I love reading, to read. reading is very... All the time, all the time. Mm -hmm. Every kind of things, of topic, of topics, uh, uh, like um, philosophy, mm 
-hmm. or laws mm -hmm. because I am a lawyer mm -hmm. and I I love I love to read I love um, general culture I don't know yes uh, that. history philosophy and grammatical and every time to learn about about uh, any any topic and uh, um, also uh, i i like to to learn to handcraft oh cool uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, like um um uh, fairy i don't know jewelry mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, make jewelry or do make make jewelry make like jewelry it. yeah making jewelry uh-huh and uh, like um um re in earring mm -hmm. or um chains yeah chains or know. uh necklaces we can refer yes, to them yes. as necklaces necklaces uh-huh uh -huh. and um for example tomorrow i will take a class of of that uh, i will go the <clears throat> the oh, yes, yes. herramientas tools tools tools, mm -hmm. tools to to learn to to do that and i am i am happy about that <laughs> i i am deciding yeah, I mean, you should be because it's a new skill and it's something that um, it might start as a hobby, but then you can turn it into a small business. I also like yeah. to make mostly bracelets. You know, I have made a few bracelets yes. before. Um, I wish, I mean, sometimes I, you know, we have ideas uh, and probably one of these days I might just start making them because I like to spend time also with handicraft. Um, I don't know why. It's just like I like having my hands busy. You know, I'm a little bit anxious, so I like I like to to stay busy doing something. Um, so it can also become a small business. You can also get some profit from that in in the future. So you know, you never know. Just try it, and maybe maybe in a while you're gonna get better at it, and then you're gonna also see some rewards from that. But yeah, yes. so here I send you uh, the three words that are, you know, common on in the case of making jewelry. Um, le cambié lo de decir okay. chains por necklaces porque chains se refiere a como las cadenas directamente, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. O sea, cuando hablamos de um, cosas que son metálicas principalmente. Puede ser oro, puede ser plata. Eh, esas son principalmente las, las chains. <laughs> ¿Sí? Por otro lado, el, los necklaces se pueden también pueden haber necklaces que sean de oro eh, si ustedes han visto a veces esos collarcitos que son así bien delgaditos ajá sí. esos que son bien bien delgaditos así de oro no, no. Eh, quizá pero el detalle es que esos son como más más sujetados al cuello yo me uh -huh. refiero más a los que son delgaditos que parecen como que fuesen hilitos sí, entonces sí. esos no tienen forma de cadena las que son chains son principalmente ajá, los que ajá, tienen esta ajá. forma entonces todo sí, aquel sí. artículo de eh, digamos de belleza personal puede ser metálico plástico bisutería. ajá toda bisutería correcto eh, que usen ustedes que no tengan forma de cadena no se va a llamar chain se va a llamar okay. necklace sí será un okay. necklace porque Um, básicamente es un collar, o sea, eso ya se cuenta como un collar. Así okay. que, yes, so necklaces. Okay, Luego, para, las, para los manos, sí, casi siempre van a ser uh, bracelets. Sí, para los manos, en, es, bracelets. Ajá, bracelets es la palabra más común, ¿verdad? Para referirnos a las pulseras. Ok, teacher, thank you. All right, very good. You're welcome. So, let's see if we hear from the last person and then we get into the topic for tonight. And the last person for tonight, I think, is going to be Francisco. I haven't heard from you in the last few days. So, Francisco, what is your favorite hobby? Please don't tell me that driving. <laughs> Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, my favorite hobby is play video games. Oh. And I study, um, uh, no sé cómo se dice, programación. Um, programming? Yeah, programming is... Uh, um eh, the video games um programming and programs etc it's okay. my favorite hobby and what will happen to be your favorite video game so far 
Uh, the Lion of Zelda, Final Fantasy, um, God of War, uh, er everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, when you get into that, you know, it's very hard to detach. Yeah, it, the video game is an experience, uh, um, a passion in my, my life. Um, uh, for other is view anime. Mm -hmm. um, the collection, um, what was it, figuras? Um, it would be figures. I yeah. mean, you can you can refer to them as figures. Yes, my animated, video, animated figures. Yeah, my video game favorite is Okami. Uh, Okami. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, All right. Is my passion is collection, um, figuras, uh, toys, um, yeah, amigos. Etc. 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 Okay. In terms of figures, I only have a few Naruto's. Apart from that, <laughs> I don't have many. Ah, yeah. Okay. I have a few Naruto's. However, I mean, you know, I do something that is very weird because my room is really tiny. My room is not really that big. I only have mm -hmm. my bed, a few things there, and that's the reason why I normally don't teach these classes from my room. I mm -hmm. come to my um to my kitchen. The yeah. thing is that um yeah I like to buy things. But I don't have them at my house. I mm -hmm. normally store my stuff at my girlfriend's house. I know mm -hmm. it's going to be tricky the day we break up. I hope we're not. I hope we don't. But if we do, it's going to be very hard because I'm going to take so many things away from her. Um, Because, yeah, I have some Keanu Reeves. I have mm -hmm. some Green Day figures. I have some uh, other uh, anime figures. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, the thing is, as I said, you know, I prefer to have the collection in her house because it looks better because her room is bigger and we have bought you know some some stands for us to put our things there and uh, I mean my wish I think you also have something similar I will assume is to have a, a room only for those things in the future you know when I can and when I get money when I get um older I would like to have a space where I can get into it and see all my figures, all the things that I have enjoyed in my life. And uh, yeah, because for example, we actually started on our first date. On my first date with my girlfriend, I got mm. her as a tiny Kakashi. That was the first thing I got her. And she yeah. still has it. Um, so, you know, it's like a thing we have done so far. For our birthdays, normally what we do is that we get Funkos for one for each other. I, Funko, uh, I, I... I bought the Funkos, the um, the Black Panther, uh, uh, special oh. edition, mm -hmm. the Shuri, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Eh, trae una camisa, the shirt, no sé si se mira. Trae una oh, camisa. Oh yeah, 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 I can see it, kind of. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, it's cool. Beautiful. Teacher, nice. you, you know, you, you read the mangas or manguas? No. The manga I is only, Japanese, I only the manga do the, is Korean. I only do the anime. I don't do ah. the mangas. Yeah. Because I like, <laughs> you know, I like the animation better. Uh, I know yeah. the story is better in the manga. And I don't do it because I I have been hurt, you know. Mm. Um, With that thing, with the Hunger Games, the first series of books that I read, I remember how excited I was when I heard that they were going to make the movies. But then the movies were not what I expected. They mm -hmm. did have some details, but they were not true to the to the book. Mm -hmm. And that's why I decided when I got into the, um, you know, Asian thing, I decided I was not going to be reading mangas because I knew that some details were going to be taken away. So I better just go ahead and go with the anime because uh, that way I will enjoy it as it is, as it comes. Um, I do listen to critics. My sister, for example, she's mm -hmm. into reading manga. One of my best friends is also into reading manga. So when we're watching anime, they're like, oh, that's not in the manga. So it's like, <laughs> I do listen to the opinions, but I don't like to do it myself because I don't like getting disappointed, you know? Um, well, the problem that tiene the anime is it is different uh, to manga or lighting novel. Is The lighting novel is fantastic. Um, the um different uh, manga, uh, manga is, um, el dibujo del um, bueno, la representación, I mm -hmm. rotation, is, uh, el manga tiene muchas cosas que el anime no tiene. 
Es lo que siempre me dicen y por eso no yeah. lo leo. <risa> Porque no me, gusta, no me gusta quedarme ahí después con el deseo de haber visto aquello en pantalla. Es como que, ya. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Ese es el motivo por el que no lo leo. Okay. Porque si lo leyera fuera como que cada rato con cada anime que viera me quedaría decepcionado. Porque diría, ay, eso no estaba en el manga. Cierto. So yeah, that's, that's the reason why I don't do manga. Uh, But, um, uh -huh. Your favorite... Um, uh, ¿Anime? Dice? No, no, no. Oh. Um, ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Character? Ya, um, ya. Yeah, yeah. your, your, ¿Your character favorite o que se identifica con usted? Ooh, that's a weird one. Because right now, my favorite character will mm. be Goyo Satoru right now. Mm, But okay. uh, if we go back into like the whole thing, I will have to say that my favorite since I was young, since I was a little kid, since I was like, Um, let me like 12 years old. I started to love Gara from oh, that. okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, those general? Are, huh? favorite, favorite gen, gen, general? General? General. yeah, I, I, I don't really have one. Ah, okay, <laughs> I like egg, 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 egg. Okay, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. so yeah, I, I, I yeah, okay. don't have one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I don't, but, I don't know uh, what is manga. It's like the book representation of an anime. It's yeah. uh, oh. like the Asian version of a comic book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The like... lighting novel is a text. Mm -hmm. All text. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. a manga okay. is like a comic book from uh, the Asian world. Yeah. Like in my case, for example. Comic books, I do read. For ex if if you ask me about comic books, I do read comic books. Yeah. I haven't in the last few years or month, but uh, I do read comic books. But mangas, I as I said, I made a promise to myself. I knew so many people, my sister included, who told me <laughs> that, um, you know, if I did read the manga, I was going to get destroyed because they know how I am. They know that I love the details. And even my dream, if I ever become a billionaire, I mean a millionaire, is that I would like to make a true to self version of the Hunger Games in a series. So see, I love the details. Um <laughs> so yeah, that's why I don't do the, the, the thing with the manga. The principal problem with the manga is is in black and white. And uh, uh ma in manga is a color. Oh really? Mm -hmm. So the Koreans do use color? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I heard some of that as well from my girlfriend because she also reads mangas. So, however, she reads more. Oh, I forgot the title, but the I'm gonna say it the gay version of the manga. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that's what she likes to read. So I I'm not into that either. But you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get into it then. Um. So for tonight, have and get something done. We. At this last night, we experienced how to um, how to say a few things with this. For example, when um, you are using the active voice, what matters or something that is going to be very important in the conversation or in the sentences is going to be to mention um, the person who is going to carry out that um, service or that um, action for you. In the passive way, What matters the most is the fact that you get that done, all right? The person or the who is not as important. In here, we also have a structure and how uh, it's going to be normally built up. The first is have or get, you know, then in the active form, it's going to be someone, as I said. It's always going to be important to include the someone. And then the verb is going to be in its base form. If you see here, that's what we get. Um, for example, here we have, you can have, um, so of course you knew that we were going to use that. Hazel's personal services. This is the someone. All right. It might be a group. It's not only one person, but still it counts as a someone. Then the verb is in its base form. It doesn't have to have any changes. So you can have Hazel's personal services fix your bike. So very easy, right? We have, uh, um, the detail or what we want. Then we have the someone, then we have the action, and then we have the object. Um, that's probably something that I will have to add here because, of course, at the end, we're always going to have to add an object 
at the end, which is basically what is going to receive the action. Uh, and because also the object is um, very important in the passive form. In the passive form, you get have or get, of course, uh, as part of the formula, as in mathematics. Then you get the object, okay? The object is going to be the important thing. It's not the person, but the object. And then in the, in the verb, you're gonna have the verb in its past participle form. If you see here, the thing is that both verbs that are used here, uh, or I mean, it's only one verb, it, it is fixed. So it is a regular verb. Therefore, the change that it suffers is only adding an ed at the end. Therefore, it's gonna be only fixed. So there is not a big change, but please remember when we are dealing with past participle forms of verbs, we're going to get into the zone of irregular verbs. And when we're talking about irregular verbs, I hope you guys remember, we're talking about something crazy. We're talking about verbs that have changes uh, in it on themselves being different from one another. So all the irregular verbs are tricky and that topic has already been covered so I'm not going to be spending too much, too much time into them. But the thing is that um, you have to remember that, okay? When you're using the passive in any form, not only when getting somebody to do something, but in any form that you use a passive form, you're going to need to use the um, past participle of the verb. So here it's easy. It's only a regular verb. So you have it only as fixed. So um the sentence will have to be at the end, something like, you can have your bike fixed by. So here, this part, as I said before, is not too important, okay? It is information that is crucial to the sentence, yes, but it's not the base of the information, okay? It's not like the most important thing about the sentence. So, um, yeah, so here you, here you go. You can have your bike fixed by Hazel's personal services. So when you mention Hazel's personal services, you do it only to clarify who is going to do the job, but it's not because this person or this group is so important to, um, to the realization of the activity. What it matters here is that the activity is realized. Okay, it, it's carried out. Así que la forma principal en la que debería ser construida una oración en su forma activa eh, esto aplica para casi que todas las oraciones, no significa que solamente es en este, en este caso, sino que en todos los casos que ustedes utilicen voces activas o pasivas, ¿ok? La voz activa se enfoca principalmente en la persona, en el quién está realizando algo, y la voz pasiva se enfoca principalmente en el objeto o en la actividad a realizar. Eh, la persona sí se menciona en la voz pasiva, porque se menciona. No vamos a dejar, ¿verdad?, eh, la oración sin un sujeto porque de esa forma, pues, sería bastante complicado. No entenderíamos necesariamente a qué o acerca de quién es que va referido eh, este mensaje. Pero no es quizá tan relevante la persona. Sí, eso es algo que, o sea, es bien importante que recordemos. La persona va a ser mencionada al final, pero no va a ser mencionada con tanta importancia. Si ya utilizamos el by, básicamente, o sea, estamos queriendo eh, indicar si sí, quién lo va a realizar, pero no necesariamente es como que sea tan importante. Por ejemplo, si yo digo, um, a ver, vamos a ver aquí. Teacher, teacher, ¿Sí? excuse me. Uh -huh. uh, someone is, is the subject. The subject, yes. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. yeah. Ok. So, so here, ajá. Uh -huh. Please, please um, write a, 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 an example, please. That's what I was about to do. <laughs> okay, so please. here we have, um, it's going to be just a simple uh, example, not following the idea that we were uh, having before. So that's an, an active sentence. My mom is making dinner. Okay, my mom is making dinner. Now, in a passive voice, we will have to say something like dinner is being made by my mom. So this is basically how we will sound. It, this is active and this is passive. Both follow the same idea. The idea is that dinner is being made or that um, there is food in being prepared. 
but in the active form, you have the subject performing the action. Okay, so the subject is the one carrying out the action. In the passive voice, you have the action being the main focus of the sentence, and then you have the person or the subject who is performing said action, but it's not the highlight. Okay, it's, con lo que hacemos, por ejemplo, principalmente, y para que entendamos también en qué momento lo vamos a poder utilizar, esto es más que todo cuando queremos quitar el protagonismo de la persona. Por ejemplo, si ustedes, eh, digamos, son, son los jefes en un trabajo, en una empresa, y quieren ser modestos, ¿verdad? Con un trabajo que ustedes hicieron, o ¿no? con una actividad que ustedes llevaron a cabo. Eh... Por, por poner un ejemplo, que se cambió el jabón en el baño, ¿sí? O sea, si ustedes lo quisieran decir, como ponerse ustedes como el punto focal y decir, ¿verdad? Que ustedes cambiaron el jabón, ustedes podrían decir, I replaced the soap in all the bathrooms in the, in the, um, in the building. Sí, eso sería en forma activa, queriendo llamar la atención hacia ustedes. En cambio, si lo quisieran decir eh, de una forma más modesta, sería... The soaps in, um, in all the bathrooms in the building were replaced by me. Ok, pero ahí básicamente lo que hacemos es que si nos colocamos al final como sujetos, estamos dejando la información principal o la información, eh, digamos, que queremos que sea más recordada al principio. Y en este caso sería la acción, no quién lo hizo, sino qué fue lo que se hizo. Entonces, eh, ahí será, ¿verdad?, donde utilicemos más que todo la voz pasiva, cuando se trate de, eh... ok, understood, Dennis, no problem, eh, entonces, básicamente es a eso a lo que nos referimos, cuando estamos tratando de ser modestos o de que el sujeto no tenga esa, eh, digamos, importancia o relevancia tan grande en la oración, um, también lo podemos utilizar en caso, digamos, que algo pasó, algo malo, eh, también puede ser, o sea, puede ser en muchos casos, pero no, no necesariamente vamos a acostumbrarnos a todo el tiempo, ¿verdad? Utilizar la voz pasiva. La voz pasiva se reserva más que todo para momentos como ese, momentos en los cuales o estamos tratando de ser modestos o si no ha habido una actividad que sea, digamos, complicada de explicar. Entonces, y para eso es mejor utilizar la voz pasiva. Por ejemplo, um, si ustedes quieren informarle a alguien que se le quebró un disco, digamos, ¿sí? un DVD, entonces, si ustedes le dicen, your daughter broke your DVD, es como que la información directa recae, ¿verdad?, sobre la persona, sobre la hija de esta persona. En cambio, si ustedes dicen, your DVD was broken by your daughter, es como que, si es cierto, le están dando la responsabilidad a la hija, pero lo primero que quieren informar es que se quebró el DVD, ¿sí? Entonces, eh, no están, ¿cómo decirlo así?, no están poniendo el chambre, o sea, no están yendo directamente a decirle, mira, esta cipota hizo esto, sino que le dicen primero, pasó esto, lo hizo esta persona. Sí, esos serían como los momentos en los que principalmente vamos a utilizar la voz pasiva. La voz activa se usa en casi que toda oración, o sea, todo el tiempo que casi estamos utilizando la voz activa, pero la voz pasiva es algo que se reserva, ¿verdad?, para momentos eh, como los ejemplos que acabo de mencionar. No sé si tenemos alguna duda acerca de esto, porque sé que es un tema que no necesariamente teníamos que cubrir, pero pues estaba aquí en medio, ¿verdad? De las, de las cosas que estamos tratando. So, I don't know. Do you guys um, have any questions referred to the passive voice? Bueno, parece que no entonces. Bueno, so, let's move on. No. Let's get into the three word phrasal verbs. This is the thing that I was uh, mentioning last night something that we're going to be learning about tonight. So, as I said, phrasal verbs are very common in English, okay? You use them for many words or for many phrases that do not have a specific verb that will come with them. Now, two-word phrasal verbs are the most common form, but we do have three-word phrasal verbs. The three-word phrasal verbs are normally built up by having one verb and two prepositions. The prepositions are almost all the time the same, okay? Casi siempre la preposición va a ser muy, muy parecida. La segunda, claro. Pero eh, la otra forma también, a veces, hay algunos three-word phrasal verbs que se van 
a construir de dos verbos y una preposición. Lo más común es que sean dos eh, preposiciones y un verbo. Pero a veces habrá algunos como este caso, take care of. Sí, take care of. Este, eh, pues tenemos dos verbos, ¿verdad? Take, que es tomar y care, cuidar, of, de, sí. O sea, y esto significa cuidar. When you take care of something, it's basically that you're uh, looking after that, that you're, um, what? Eso es complicado, porque como les digo, o sea, no existe palabras. Cuando utilizamos phrasal verbs es que no existe otra palabra para referirnos a ello, ¿verdad? En español sí, claro, pero en inglés, o sea, utilizamos esto porque, pues, nos hemos quedado sin palabras específicas para referirnos a ello. Porque eh, lo que usé fue otro phrasal verb. Cuando les dije looking after, pues look after, ese es otro phrasal verb que se utiliza para algo bastante similar, que sería cuidar. Sí. So take care of something or take care of someone is basically cuidar that person or that thing. Now, broke up with or broken up with. Um, when you break up with, is uh yes Boris tell me with the last phrase or bird we can say to uh, uh could you keep an eye keep an eye to mm -hmm. my yes uh, keep an eye on mm -hmm. yeah. keep an eye on yes 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 very nice that is a very good one I will send it on the chat so you guys can have it as well keep an eye Importante que recordemos también cuál es la, um, la preposición, que es, en este caso sería keep an eye on. Sí, siempre, o sea, vamos a referirnos a keep an eye on, que es básicamente como mantén, eh, mantén la vista o mantén un ojo, o cuídame, podríamos entenderlo en español, ¿verdad? So, very good. Keep an eye on. Then, broken up with. This do, does have uh, like an idea, it's not a verb, but like an idea in English as well, which is finishing a relationship. Pero ustedes no van a ir todo el tiempo diciendo, ¿verdad? I finished my relationship or ended my relationship with. Um, so the word that we use is break up or broken up. Eso ya sería en pasado. En cambio, también podemos decirlo en presente, sí, como normal. So you can say break up with, sí. When you break up with someone, What it means is that you used to be in a relationship with that person, but you're not anymore. So that is break up. Then we have come up with, come up with, or in the past came up with. When you come up with something, this is something, okay? Not someone, but something is when you, uh, let's say that you find the answer or that you generate an idea. Okay, when you find an answer or you generate an idea, I come up with. Let's say that in a party, we were, you know, at a party and we had um, uh, someone decided to make small sandwiches, like tiny sandwiches like this, you know, super tiny sandwiches. So uh, you can use the phrase. Yeah, it was Cindy, the one that came up with that idea. Básicamente, entonces sería como ocurrir en español, sí, se le ocurrió. O sea, esta persona se le ocurrió, esta persona tuvo la idea. So, uh, you can also ask, who came up with that idea? Entonces, y lo vamos a utilizar, ¿verdad? Para eso. También se puede usar en el caso que alguien aparezca de sorpresa con algo. Podría ser, no es tan común, pero también podría ser. Digamos que ustedes estaban en una reunión familiar y, o sea, invitaron a un amigo, ¿verdad? O qué sé yo, invitaron a su novio. Si sí, en caso de las mujeres estaban en una reunión, invitaron a su novio... Y su novio llega de la nada, o sea, con, con algo de alcohol. Entonces, es como que, uh, that was not expected, that was not supposed to happen. Y eso sería otro come up with, sí. Es como que sorprendió, digamos, con esa ocurrencia, con esa idea que tuvo. So, come up with. All right, moving up. Then we have looking forward to. When you look forward to something, it means that you're expecting that. Like uh, many people can be at this moment looking forward to what? Looking forward to the weekend because you are planning something or some other people may be looking forward to Mother's Day because you want to give your mom a gift or because you want to go visit your mom. So look forward to. Look forward to is when you're expecting someone something. Um, basicamente se, se va a utilizar el look forward cuando, or look forward to cuando estamos ansiosos por algo, cuando estamos expectantes de algo, ¿sí? 
es básicamente en el caso que ustedes digan, I look forward to Mother's Day. Es como que espero con ansias, sí, el día de la madre. So, look forward to is expecting something anxiously, expecting something with big desire. Now, we have cut down on. Cut down on. Cut down on, uh, it can also be um, seen as reducing on something, reduce the amount of something as well. So cut down on, like for example, let's say that you get on a diet and you start cutting down on your carbs. Básicamente eso se va a referir a reducir. Sí. Cut down on va a ser reducir. Um, se utiliza principalmente para referirnos a la reducción de comida o de algunas actividades. Like, um, for example, if you used to go a lot to play soccer, and now you don't. So it's like you're cutting down on soccer. So you're spending more time with your family, and you're not spending as much time, you know, at the soccer field. So cut down on. Uh, then we also have... Keep up with, keep up with. When you um, see the keep up with, it means that um, you stay up to date. Ese es otro phrasal verb, básicamente. No es necesariamente un verbo específico, ¿verdad? Sino que es otro phrasal verb. Stay up to date eh, y keep up with se refieren a lo mismo. Es básicamente... Cuando ustedes quieren decir que van a mantenerse al tanto. Sí, mantenerse al tanto. Ahora, también se um, puede entender como, eh, o sea, en el sentido como de estar encima de algo, ¿verdad? O sea, como en el caso que ustedes um, están planeando alguna actividad o están desarrollando alguna actividad y ustedes necesitan estar ahí, o sea, pendientes de lo que está pasando, you can also say keep up with. I need to keep up with it. Ahora, por otro lado, también se puede entender el keep up with como el eh, tener un desarrollo equiparado a los demás. O sea, en el caso que ustedes estén en una clase, ¿verdad? Y en algún punto eh, tenemos algún compañero al que le está costando entender el desarrollo de la clase, podemos decir that this person is not keeping up. O sea, que no se mantiene ahí, ¿verdad? O sea, no, no sigue el ritmo. Um, yes, Boris. Eh... We can say that uh, um, keep keep um, keep up with if like uh, the opposite of uh, out of touch maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, the keep up with will be an opposite to out of touch. So it's like you have lost information. You do not have updated information on something or someone, and uh, you have not necessarily paid attention to that thing. Uh, in the last few days. So, yeah, keeping up with is a contrary to um, out of touch. Like, when you have not heard about someone in a long time, that means that you're out of touch with a person. Or when you have not practiced something in a long time, you're out of touch with that activity as well. But keeping up, as I was saying, can also refer to staying at the same level. Okay, so when you're, um, you know, carrying out an activity and uh, you're being assessed, in that activity and you start failing it means that you're not keeping up but if you continue and stay at the same level then you are keeping up now we have put up with put up with now you have heard all of them what do you think it's the meaning of put up with ¿Qué creen ustedes que podría ser el put up with ¿Qué creen ustedes que puede ser No idea. <laughs> no idea? No, sorry. Okay. Put up with is basically when you're strong enough to support. Not support. Support is like when you are uh, agree with that. Um, How can I say this? When you are strong enough to, to handle a situation. Okay. Put up with basically means soportar. Sí. Es casi como que la queso. Uh, so yeah, put up with. See, it's, uh, you can say this when a friend of yours has two kids and those two kids are disastrous kids, you know, the kind of kids that never stop and they're breaking things and they're running here and there 
and they don't listen. They're just doing anything they want. So you can tell this friend of yours. I don't know how you can put up with that. So put up with, básicamente es soportar. O sea, no sé cómo puedes aguantar esto. Sí, entonces put up with. Um, let's say that you have to do something at, at your work that you don't like and uh, your boss is... Sería yes? como tener paciencia. Básicamente, sí, se puede entender como, como eso. O sea, no sé cómo tienes la paciencia. Podríamos decir, decir lo que... O sea, cuando querramos utilizar una frase como esa, ¿verdad? Como, no sé cómo tienen la paciencia, ustedes pueden decir, I don't know how they can put up. Sí, o sea, put up with. Es como, no sé cómo tienes la paciencia de, de lidiar con eso. Pero como les estaba diciendo, si su jefe les está pidiendo algo que a ustedes no les gusta y que ustedes no están de acuerdo con aquello, pero es un mandato directo de su jefe, you guys will have to say, you have to put up with that. Sí, o sea, es como que tienes que aguantar, tienes que hacerlo, porque pues es básicamente una orden. So, put up with, um, it does refer to being patient, yes, to recognizing at least the patience that someone has um, in a specific moment. And uh, it also refers to being strong enough to to support, to, uh, support, es que support es como apoyar. Uh, ¿Ven lo que les digo? A veces de los false cognates, I forgot the word there. Well, to resist, to resist something. So yeah. Uh, the next one, get along with. When you get along with, it's basically talking about a person. So getting along with someone, it means that you have a good relationship. Uh, let's say that um, many people say that cats and dogs don't get along well. That means that they don't have the best relationship, that they normally get into fighting if they have the chance of facing one another. So not getting along is the contrary, of course, of getting along. But getting along is when you have a nice relationship, like um, you can joke with that person, you can have fun with that person, you can talk with that person. Um, that will be, you know, getting along. Things can also get along as if, let's say that we are um, building up a puzzle and uh, we have pieces that we think are matches. You can say that if those pieces match completely, you can say that they get along. But if those pieces don't match in, 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 in a detail, you can say that they do not get along. Entonces, también se puede usar con cosas. Por ejemplo, en el caso de, digamos, que ustedes tengan pernos y tuercas y una, la tuerca sea más grande que el perno, es como que they don't get along. O sea, no se llevan, ¿verdad? No son compatibles. Entonces, básicamente a eso se refiere, el decir get along with, como ser compatible con aquella persona. No se refiere necesariamente a la situación de relaciones amorosas, sino que ser compatible en diferentes sentidos, eh, también en situaciones de amistad. Um, yes, Boris. Teacher, uh, in the enterprise, sometimes the bosses uh, uh, ask for people that uh, can get along to work in teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something that happens very often. You know, in, in the, the workplace, um, bosses or leaders normally try to put people that get along um, to work together because they're going to have a better relationship and probably better results in the project. So it's better to, to create teams of people or workers that get along because they're, of course, going to produce more um, compared to people that do not get along. So very good. And then we had already mentioned um, take care of, which basically meant um, to watch out for something, to put an eye on something, to... Um, cuidar algo, sí, cuidar, vigilar, those are the, the ways in which you can refer to taking care of. So, very good. Um, moving on, we have here these phrasal verbs in examples. For example, the first one is, Jennifer has broken up with her boyfriend. Again? So, there you have it. Jennifer has broken up with her boyfriend. Again. O sea que terminaron otra vez, ¿verdad? Esos típicos amigos que tienen esa relación tóxica que se terminan, regresan, terminan, regresan and they're on that game. Uh, next one. Kevin came up with a great idea for our class reunion. Kevin came up with a great idea for our class reunion. Ahora, 
En español, la traducción de estas, por ejemplo, sería la primera. Jennifer terminó con su novio otra vez. Kevin, a Kevin, en este caso sería a Kevin primero, a Kevin se le ocurrió una gran idea para nuestra reunión de clase, ¿sí? For a class reunion. Uh, then we have, I'm not looking forward to uh, typing my essay. Maybe I'll get it done professionally. I'm not looking forward to typing my essay. Maybe I'll get it done professionally. Eso significa que no estoy emocionado, no estoy expectante o no deseo escribir mi ensayo, ¿sí? O typear mi, mi ensayo. Entonces, quizá mejor eh, busque que me lo hagan profesionalmente. O sea, que lo haga un profesional, ¿verdad? Entonces, como ir a un ciber que se lo hagan. So, yeah, maybe I'll get it done professionally. Then we have, my doctor says I'm overweight. I should cut down on fatty foods. My doctor says I'm overweight. I should cut down on fatty foods. Mi doctor dice que estoy eh, pesado, o sea, o, eh, más pesado de lo normal, gordito. Debería bajarle a las comidas grasosas. Entonces, cut down on se va a referir, ¿verdad? A cuando nosotros, pues, reducimos la cantidad de algo. So, I should cut down on fatty foods. Then we have, Rob can't keep up with The students in his Mandarin class. He should get a tutor. Eh, esto se va a entender como que Rob no se mantiene al ritmo de los estudiantes de su clase de mandarín o de los compañeros en su clase de mandarín. Él debería conseguir un tutor. Sí, él debería conseguir un tutor because he can keep up. Then we have, I can't put up with the noise on my street. I'll have to move. I can't put up with the noise on my street. I'll have to move. Esto se va a entender como no puedo soportar el ruido en mi calle. Tendré que mudarme. Si no puedo soportar el ruido en mi calle, tendré que mudarme. Then we have, my girlfriend doesn't get along with her roommate. They're always fighting. My girlfriend doesn't get along with her roommate. They're always fighting. Mi novia no se lleva con su compañera de cuarto o compañero de cuarto. Siempre están peleando. Entonces, there you have it. Getting along with. Then we have. Bill can't take care of his own finances. He has an accountant manage his money. Bill can't take care of his own finances. He has an accountant manage his money. Esto significa que Bill no puede cuidar sus propias finanzas. Tiene un contador que maneje su dinero o que maneja su dinero. All right, so that's it. That's the one for examples. Now, here we have the meanings. Sí, estos son ya directamente, ¿verdad? Los resultados o los, las ideas, digamos, las, um, los significados detrás de los phrasal verbs. El primero... Be excited for something to happen. ¿Cuál sería este? ¿Cuál recuerdan ustedes que es el be excited for something to happen? Los ejemplos que tenemos son, a ver, has broken up with, came up with, look forward to, cut down on, keep up with, put up with, get along with, take care of. Entonces, be excited for something to happen. ¿Qué significa eso? ¿Cuál sería de los, de los que Look tenemos? forward. Mm -hmm. Look forward, Look forward to. to. Look forward to. Very good. Then, end a romantic relationship. What is this one? End a romantic relationship. Break up with. Break up with. Very good. Now, keep pace with someone or something. Keep pace with someone or something. What up? Mm, get, get along with. Get along with. Nope. Keep pace es mantener el paso. Entonces, will be keep up with. ¿Sí? Keep up with. Básicamente, se va, se va a ser keep up with. Cuando nos mantenemos al mismo paso. Keep pace with someone or something. Now, tolerate something you don't like. En este caso, sí. Tolerate something you don't like. What is the meaning of that one? Put up with. Put up with. Very good. Put up with is when you tolerate something that you don't like. Now, reduce the quantity of something. 
Reduce the quantity. Down. Cut down on. Cut down on. Down on. Then have a good. Have, oh, there we go. Very good. Thank you very much. Have a good relationship with someone is getting along with. Then be responsible for something. Take care of. Take care of. Very good. Take care of. Yes, and then think of something or develop an idea. Come up with. Come up with. Very nice. Muy, muy bien. All right. So uh, basically that's it, guys. Um, if you guys want to take my advice, I will tell you to go ahead and search for more three-word phrasal verbs because there are more than the ones we have seen tonight. Um, you can get lists on the internet, you know, and you can also practice them and start using them in your conversations as they are, of course, going to be very useful when it comes to um, communicating with, you know, English speaking people. Um, so, yeah, for now, all I have to do is basically thank you uh, for your attention and participation in this evening's class. We are done for today. I expect you guys tomorrow. Remember, this week we're going until Friday. Tomorrow is not going to be your last class. It's going to be until Friday. So thank you guys very much. Have a really good one and see you tomorrow. So bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.